Hello Internet, this is Oscar Luis again, showing you how to use Lagrange polynomials to approximate functions using polynomial interpolation. Lagrange polynomials are relatively simple to understand. If you have k different points from some function, you don't have to know what the function is. You can kind of write an approximation of that function to give you good guesses around those points. The Lagrange polynomial form looks like this, where you have f of x0 times x minus x1 times x minus x2, all the way until x minus xn, divided by, in this case we're going to use x0 since this is our first term, x0 minus x1, x0 minus x2, all the way until x0 minus xn. And in the next term we'll swap x0 with x1 for all of our points. Now we'll try it with another example. In this case we're given an actual function, but we're kind of pretend like we don't know what the function is, and we have three points from that function. So given those three points, we'll plug them into our Lagrange polynomial form to come up with this equation, which we could simplify further. Now if we try to graph this a Lagrange polynomial, we come up with a graph that looks like this, where if we overlap our, our original function, they overlap exactly. So in this case, our Lagrange polynomial ended up being exactly equal to our original function, but that's not always going to be the case. Why does this work? Well, Lagrange polynomial is designed so that way whenever we have an x that's equal to one of our starting points, the other terms will simply cancel out to zero. This way, the Lagrange polynomial is always guaranteed to go through the points that we start with. Now let's look at Lagrange polynomial for another for, uh, equation, this time the natural log of x. So if we're given three points and we try to approximate it, it looks like a Lagrange polynomial is a really bad approximation of our function. But that's only because we're evaluating it rather far away from our starting points. We should all probably only use it closer to the points that we start with. In this case, Lagrange polynomial actually looks like it's a very good approximation of f of x. But how accurate is it? Well, the error is our original function subtracted by a Lagrange polynomial for all x's. And if we do some fancy math, we're able to come up with this formula. So if we use our function from our previous example and evaluate the error at point x is equal to 1.05, we'll simply plug everything into this equation. Notice, though, that this equation also requires a third derivative at some point. That point is somewhere between our x domain. So it's going to be the point that maximizes that third derivative. And it turns out that this is equal to 0 0.00125. So the most that this equation could be off is about 0 0.00125, which is actually fairly accurate. Now we have another example of the function f of x is equal to cosine of pi x. And I've drawn in the Grange polynomial degree 4. I've also exaggerated the error a little bit, just to kind of give you the idea that the Grange polynomial isn't always going to be exact. So how accurate would this Lagrange polynomial be? Find the error. Well, given our function f of x is equal to cosine of pi x, and we know that each x is 0.1 distance apart, we'll go ahead and use our original formula, only this time tweaked a little bit, because we weren't given exact points. All we were given was that each one is about 0.1 apart. So if we try to maximize the error as a great approximation, then we can say that since each of them is 0.1 apart, the most that each of those terms could be is about 0.4. So we're being a little lazy here. And although we don't know a good approximation for the fifth derivative's maximum point, we always know that sine of something isn't going to be greater than 1. So in this case, we can put 1 in there instead. And this gives us an error of about 0 0.0261. Keep in mind that a very high ordered Lagrange polynomial is pretty accurate around some points, but becomes a really bad approximation towards points further away from it. Instead of high degree Lagrange polynomials, try to use piecewise Lagrange or even splines for better results. Thanks for watching.